Hi there, I'm gonna give you a run through on how you put together our Bumblebee plans booklet to recreate a whole set of boat plans. And basically it's quite unique how we've done this. Instead of lofting, which is a little challenging and not very accurate, um, what you do is you print out the plans booklet on your home computer and then you put the pages together and basically recreate the full sized plans for the entire boat. Very accurate, just as accurate as the plans that you get in the mail if you get the full size plan sent to you. The advantage of just using a file is that you can do it right away. So you don't have to wait for your full size plans to arrive in the mail. You just basically make the purchase, download the files, and instantly you can print it at your home computer and within two hours be transcribing that onto the plywood. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, take you on a step-by-step -step process on how to go from just a file on your computer to having full-size plans. It's pretty cool. So basically what you're gonna do, first of all, is open up the plans booklet. So once you uh, pay for the file, download the uh, zip file, you can open it up, and there'll be several different files there. Um, but the one that creates the plans is called the plans booklet. So you open that up. Okay, and this is it here. So let me just uh, show you, we'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so once you open it, you'll see it's an Adobe file. So when you open it, it is an Adobe file, so ideally you want to open it in Acrobat Reader or some other Adobe program, um, and, uh, and you're going to print it off. Now basically, before you print off the entire booklet, uh, you want to check and just make sure that your printer is printing to, uh, to um, actual size, uh, that the scaling is not off. So basically, most printers are pretty good. They, they print right on, but there's two things that can happen. Um, when you go on print, so you hit the print icon or hit file and print, uh, when that comes up, there is a default setting here, which say, generally comes on, it says shrink oversized pages. You don't want that. Uh, instead, click custom scale and make sure it's 100%. That way it won't change the size at all. It'll keep it exactly as it is at 100%, which is what we want. And then just double check. So before you print the whole thing, print one page. Okay, I've just printed page seven. And you'll notice that there's basically a rectangle that goes around the outer perimeter. And that should be seven by 10 inches, exactly. So, as you can see here, you can see the top rectangle, the top edge, side edges, and bottom edges. So the top, it's best to use a ruler. I'm just using a tape measure because I don't actually have a ruler with me right now. But uh, make sure it's seven inches across the side of the top. And along the length, it should be exactly 10 inches. If it's off by an, uh, as much as an eighth of an inch, it won't really have any impact, so you're fine. If it's more than that, you wanna correct it. So go into your printer settings where you had 100% um, uh, in the uh, setting, you wanna change that to what it should be if your printer is off. Normally, printers are pretty accurate, so you won't need to change it. Um, so once you get the page, uh, ascertain that the page, the printer is printing to the right dimensions, then you can print the entire book. And when you are printing, make sure that you don't print double-sided if your printer has that option. Okay, so that's it, pretty easy. I've printed out the entire booklet. Basically, all you do is you check the scale and then print it out. So this is what you have, and uh, now the next step will be putting it together. Now you'll also notice with the files you have, you also have the actual instruction manual, which you can print out, put it in a binder, or you can just read it off your screen, whatever you prefer, but that gives you all the instructions on how to put everything together once you assemble the plans. Okay, so here I am in the shop with my plans booklet, and what you're gonna do, the first step is just going through the book, and cutting along the lines that say cut along the lines. So with this one, you can see right there, it says cut along the line. That means this straight line here, you're going to cut. You can do it with scissors, but it's much easier just to use a straight edge and a utility knife. And I'm also gonna use a scrap piece of plywood just so I don't cut up my uh, bench too much. 
And the other thing you want to do is make sure you just keep the book in order. So that's all we're going to do right now. We're just going to go through the book, turning the pages. Um, not all the pages you'll notice are actual plans, some are instructions. But uh, just go through and cut along the lines. We've done the first couple. Uh, you'll notice some pages don't say to cut along any lines. If they don't, you don't need to cut um, along the line. But anyway, so, uh, like I said, I've, I've done a few, so I'm moving a little into the book. But this is cut along the line, so I get my straight edge, and I make sure to line it up perfectly. Now, before I do my first cut, let me remind myself and all of you, you don't want to cut without having a glove, a leather glove, on the hand that's on the, um, on the straight edge. The reason being, it's very easy for the knife to just slip off the straight edge and make a big serious cut. So you can completely mitigate that risk by wearing a leather glove and uh, it makes it so much safer. So make sure it's straight and cut, just like that, very easy. And then move on to the next page and Away you go. Indicated cut line, you just line it up and make sure it's straight and cut. Very quick, very easy. And put the pages in proper order. Okay, so for this next step, you need your plans book, which you've sliced off all the uh, lines that need slicing off and you're going to need a straight edge which uh, you can use a straight edge such as this big ruler or you can use a straight piece of wood whatever you want and you're also going to need some tape so basically uh, just turn through your book and it is a good idea to read through all this information too um, but uh, this video covers most of it so we're going to turn until we get to this page side panels you can see there's a key for how the side panels are laid. Now, there's only one plan for the two side panels because basically you just cut one panel out and then use that as a template to trace out the second one. Um, but anyway, there are two side panels and one bottom panel for the large uh, pieces the boat is comprised of. So after this side panel page is a series of pages which are, have the numbers one to nine, and those are comprised of the side panels. Now getting back to the key, you can see that the panels are in two levels, three to seven is all in one flat plane, and then one and two and eight and nine are slightly higher up. So what you're gonna do is lay three to seven first, and make sure the bottoms butt against the straight edge you have, that ensures that they are perfectly aligned. So one and two aside over here, and then we're gonna lay out three, two, seven against the straight edge. Can you see everything? Let's tilt this just a little bit more. There we go. So, uh, make sure that doesn't turn on me. Okay, so number three, and then number four, that line you cut on number four, uh, allows it to just butt up against the straight line. So you don't do it against the edge of the paper, you don't butt it like that, you actually run that cut edge against this line. Let's see, let's move this so you can see. So you, uh, yeah, so these go together like that. So this cut edge of number four moves right against the line in three, this line here. Use the straight edge as a guide uh, on occasion, in your printer, there will be a slight shift. So if you do have that happening where it's not quite adjacent to the, uh, uh, in line with the adjacent page, then just make sure that the lines are aligned up. But basically you just don't want it to twist or deviate, um, hence having the straight edge as a reference. Um, so yeah, that's basically, let's show you here. That's three, to seven, put together nice and easily. And then you'll see on the other side, far side here, we do panels one and two. And then over on this side, we're going to do eight and nine. So let's just do one and two first. So basically I'm just going to line it all up. 
You don't need to butt it to the straight edge here. Okay, and there we go. So we've made the full shape for the side panels. And that is it there. Pretty easy. Okay, so the uh, next panel that we're creating as we go through our booklet is the bottom panel. So this is the bottom panel here. You can see the overall shape that it's gonna be. And the way we create this is basically we put one set together, the top edge or bottom, depending on what we have the uh, paper. Um, but this, you create that row and then that row, uh, and then you insert the two middle pieces. So basically we're gonna start with one to seven, very straightforward, because it's just all in a straight line. When you're putting together a row of pages, you can butt them uh, against a straight edge, such as a ruler or um, a uh, straight piece of wood. Uh, although not all printers um, place it exactly in the same spot on each page. So if you do find a discrepancy there, um, don't worry, just line up the lines instead. Instead of having it butted against your straight edge, you can still use your straight edge just to make sure it's all going straight in one direction and not uh, doing any of this. Okay, so we've created one row here, uh, pages one to seven, which is gonna comprise of one side of the bottom panel. And then next in our pile of plan pages here, we've got pages eight, which I'll put aside for now, that's the bow. And then next we will do uh, pages number nine to 15. You can see I've created two rows of uh, one side of the bottom panel and the other side so now what you're gonna do is put the ends in, so the, the bow tip, which is number eight, and then number 16 at the end here. So the, number 16, you turn it sideways, uh, and uh, so this line here is facing aft, and basically what you wanna do, let's um, just show you down here. Okay, so you can see these two arrows pointing that way and basically just shift it out until this line here and these two lines meet these lines as you can kind of you should be able to maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more there we go okay here we are putting number 16 at the end so we shift these to get the right width you've got the top edge and the bottom edge which you want to butt against these two lines here and then you just slip it into position. Don't tape it yet, but just do it. And then I've, I've got to modify this bond. We're also gonna put the front in to make sure it's all parallel. So you just get that into approximate alignment. And, uh, and then we're going to go and move to the front. So let's go to the front end here. Okay. Can you see the front? Yeah. So this is the front and with the other end in approximate alignment, we are now going to put this in. And the way this fits, you can see how it goes here. Basically, you just butt, making sure the back is still in approximate alignment, we are going to tape this. If the uh, back end isn't aligned as you do this, you might have the two side pieces uh, non-parallel to each other, and so it's important that they're parallel. Okay. So we're gonna move these pieces, tape one side and then the other. Again, lining the lines up perfectly so everything's in alignment and parallel. And then we tape. Okay, so now you can see we've completed it. We've done first the one side and then the other side, and then we've affixed both ends, the, uh, the forward tip of the bottom panel and the aft edge and now we have the whole representation of the bottom shape. It's, uh, this is the biggest one, not very complex. What you can do to add additional stability is just uh, put a piece of paper, any scrap piece of paper, um, lay it across, make sure it's not obscuring anything, and uh, just tape it into position like that. You can use one or two and that just gives it greater um, 
stability. So, yeah. so these are the two largest pieces uh, that the bow is comprised from. And uh, by the time you've put these together, I think you'll have a pretty good idea of how the whole process works. Very straightforward. And uh, so you just continue on creating the other shapes by joining the pieces together.